Well, welcome to IoT Recruiting Podcast. This is Bill McCabe. We are pleased to be joined today by Matt Vesey, Senior Business Development Director for AI and IoT. Welcome, Matt. Thanks, Bill. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Certainly. Matt, we've seen a lot of interest in artificial intelligence and IoT. Tell us a little bit about your role and how that dovetails with AI and IoT and maybe where you see uh, some of the things going in the next uh, two to three years. Sure, I'm happy to do that. So I uh, I work inside the Microsoft BD organization, and that's a, a cross-company group focused on business development to you know build the, the partnerships and the ecosystems and ultimately the deals that our customers will need to drive digital transformation. So that's kind of our overall focus. My team specifically is focused on Internet of Things and AI, um, and we're really working on delivering value in areas like edge computing, fog computing, industrial computing, and the industrial internet, um, as well as driving some of the standards uh, in the in the industry, or like OPC, uh, OMG, etc. And so we're really we ground all this work in customer needs um, and impactful use cases. So you'll see a lot of the work that we do, and we can talk a little bit about the. AI and IoT Insiders Lab that we that we use to work with customers. But that's really about my focus over the last several years. Great. You know, we hear a lot, um, you know, in the press and that kind of thing. It, it's almost like the sky is falling. It's almost like a kind of a pretty pessimistic views, view of AI. What's what's your perspective? And And I'm sure you've heard a lot of those naysayers also. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And there's all kinds of press that we've heard about, you know, how uh, you know, people think about this Terminator scenario uh, and AI bringing the end of the world uh, about. And we, we think about it quite a lot differently. And, you know, we, we've designed all of our AI around, uh, you know, a couple of key principles. One is it is designed for people, which means we see AI as extending um, the capabilities of, of, of people in the workplace and, and in their homes and in their daily and digital lives. Um, the second thing is uh, the second principle is really built on trust and trusting, you know, kind of how your data is being used and how AI is, is uh, improving or changing the way you do things. And, and the third principle is really around democratizing AI. And, and the value of AI is really um, going to be measured by the number of people that see improvements in their lives from it. So when we think about AI and, you know, so long as we adhere to the principles and, and kind of control uh, control the way AI enters our lives. We think that there's, you know, more value than risk, um, ultimately. And and so we've uh, we actually have a pretty optimistic view um, of kind of AI and the role it's going to play. So a little different than some of the things we hear out in the in the marketplace, correct? Yeah, no, ab- absolutely. I mean, I, I think that you know the the key message, the key takeaway, and you know, we actually launched a a, a book this week you know, about AI and, and really focused on, you know, helping people understand uh, AI and, and the, the role that AI is going to play, um, you, know, you know, in our lives in the future. And one of the key things is for us to make sure that we understand it, that we make it easy to use, and that we control the way that it um, kind of comes into our lives. What do you think is holding back some of the companies that might want to adopt or like IoT and AI? What, what types of things are you seeing that, it, that your customers are telling you in terms of that area? You know, the number one, you know, kind of thing that holds folks back, and we talk to, you know, a lot of, you know, enterprise customers and, that are trying to digitally transform both their kind of operations and their business models uh, with IoT and AI. And, and the, the thing which we hear from them is that traditionally when they built projects, either, you know, whether it was a, a new product that they were developing um, or a new business process, they could do a lot of that work in-house. But when you look at an IoT project, you need all kinds of different uh, resources. You need industrial design capabilities. You need electrical engineering capabilities, embedded, embedded software, um, embedded software developers, application developers, cloud service developers. And then finally, um, people forget that once you've built this, you know, digitally transformed product that you're going to need to operate it. And so you're going to have to have operations personnel and you're going to have to think through all of these things. And overlaid the whole top of this is, you know, how do you manufacture it? And so the complexity of IoT products and the different skill sets that you need really holds companies back. Uh, and so we've, you know, kind of we've seen this over the last several years. Uh, we developed something called the AI and IoT Insiders Lab, which is uh, um, a laboratory environment where customers can come 
and Microsoft has uh, resources across industrial design, electric engineering, cloud service development, etc. cetera. Um, we built those labs. We have one in Shenzhen, China. We have one here in Redmond's headquarters, at Red- Redmond headquarters of Microsoft, and we have one in Munich. And we're seeing that by bringing all of those skill sets into one place, um, that you know these projects are getting accelerated. But the big, you know, the big thing which we tell our customers is they need to go out and recruit this talent because you can't, you need to have that talent in house in order to drive, you know, kind of V2 and V3 and you know, kind of next generations of these digitally transformed products. And what have you seen in terms of the the stress on the on the traditional organizational structure in terms of some of the silos that might not have marketing and IT and CIOs and that kind of thing? What have you seen in terms of that in terms of some uh, some unique things that people have done to digitally transform their companies to uh, to make these projects work? You know the you know traditionally if let's say I was building some kind of mechatronic product you know like a you know a, even a lawnmower for instance I would design that product. I would figure out how to manufacture it. I would ship it out to market. The marketing folks would work super hard at building all kinds of flyers and working with stores on, on you know, kind of demonstrating that product. And then I would get feedback on that product basically through, you know, you know people calling 1-800-IT'S-BROKEN, um, warranty feedback, and, and that was kind of the old model. And, and as a result of that model, the, the kind of product life cycle would be, you know, in measured in years. And what we're seeing today with, with IoT uh, is that the, the product life cycle is, um, you know, first in the design process rather than doing kind of traditional design, folks are moving electrons before they move atoms, meaning they digitally design their product and they test those products digitally and then finally they build that product. Once that product is in the marketplace, it's no longer kind of a black box when it goes out into the marketplace. You can actually measure your customer's engagement with those products, both from the telemetry that's coming off of those products, but also um, you know, in the business models, maybe as a service business models that these new products are happening. So as a result, you need to totally upskill your organization. Marketing is no longer a static, you know, a static process of you know, understanding personas and, and building value propositions and shipping them out to market. It's about understanding your customers in real time, being able to digitally interact with them, gather feedback, and, and take that feedback to kind of either push out over there updates that improve product experiences or pushing that, that learning back into the design process. So, so marketing has changed completely. Product design uh, is, has changed because of this new digital aspect. And finally, when you think about, you know, the kind of the, the digital experience officer or the, um, you know, the new kind of the new marketing organization, they need to think about how they manage digital experiences with their customers if they're going to get to that next level. And so that that upskilling is is critical. And then finally, at the executive level, executives need to think about new business models because people are going to be consuming their products or worse, their competitors' products in new and different ways. And if you understand the digital product lifecycle, then you can kind of change your business models and the way you react to market demands more effectively. So I think you need to change kind of the executive mindset as well if digital transformation is going to be successful in any company. If you were to look at your crystal ball in the next two to three years, and obviously you're very excited about some of the things Microsoft is doing, it sounds like with the AI Insiders Lab, that kind of thing. You know, what role do you see Microsoft playing and what, what areas do you think you can make real impact with IoT and artificial intelligence? So we talked a little bit about kind of the, the, tr- the principles, designing for people, building on trust, and democratizing AI. We're really bringing products to market that enable those principles for our customers to bring those principles to life. So in a couple of areas, I see us democratizing AI by bringing things like Microsoft Cognitive Services, and whether it's computer vision or speech-to-text or semantic search, we're bringing tools that that make it easier for our customers to leverage um, kind of the results of machine learning and uh, and, kind of advanced computing. The second piece is is we're bringing uh, advanced tools for organizations that that rather than consuming um, our cognitive services, want to build their own services with machine learning or the Azure bot service or leveraging tools like Visual Studio tools for AI to build out, um, build out these models. So on the AI front, we're, we're bringing services to market that make it easy, and we're bringing advanced tools that enable uh, customers to get to the next layer, next level. When we think about um, 
kind of the the you know the Azure IoT side, customers you know used to think mostly about connecting their devices and getting telemetry, and we're going to enable those kinds of use cases with products like IoT Suite, uh, Azure IoT Suite, but. A lot of customers want to move intelligence and AI out to the edge. And we talked about the, the tools, the, the algorithms that they build, they'll be able to push out to the edge with Azure IoT Edge, which is a product that enables you to run AI and machine learning models right near the edge after you've trained them in the cloud. As well as we're bringing simple services like Azure IoT Central, which is a SaaS for IoT that will enable you to take you know, smaller groups of devices where you don't want to build a huge back end for a smaller group of devices, but you want to connect them and bring the telemetry back in and develop insights. And so we, you know, I see Microsoft from a you know, kind of a future perspective bringing both tools and services on the IoT side. And on the AI side that will f- first democratize uh, AI and IoT and make it easier for organizations to adopt these technologies. And then also bringing advanced tools so when they want to get to the next level and they've upskilled their organization, that they're going to have the tools with Microsoft platforms to um, you know, drive that, that transformation. That's very interesting. Where would people want to go if they want to find a little bit more about what Microsoft is doing in this area, Matt? Are there, some, are there some resources you might suggest that people might want to do if they want to find out more information about this? Yeah, I mean, if you go to Microsoft.com um, slash IoT or Microsoft.com slash AI, there are abundant resources there. Um, additionally, I have, you know, uh, encourage everyone to go to the uh, official Microsoft blog. Um, and if you uh, Bing search uh, official Microsoft blog, you'll get a link there, and you can actually find out more about what our leaders in, in AI and quantum computing and other technologies are thinking. Plus, you can download the book, um, The Future Computed, which is a book that we brought out this week. Brad Smith uh, and Harry Shum uh, have kind of co-authored this book that really talks about um, you know, how we see the, the role of AI in the future and how, you know, what Microsoft's role in that future is. Very interesting. Matt, thank you very much for your time today. We appreciate it. We look forward to collaborating with you on, on other, other projects like this. And good luck in your role with, uh, with Microsoft, with AI. We look forward to talking to you in the future. All right. Thanks, Bill. You have a great rest of your day, and thanks for having me on. All right. Take care.